I just did a segment, it's recorded my segment on Contra points and her recent cancellation for that Twitter stuff when it came to her saying that a lot of Zoomer LGBT people and especially their messaging that they have is kind of confusing and at some times like intuitively contradictory. And then in response to that, she made a, an essay, I guess, where she explains the positioning. She un explains under what circumstances uh, those, you know, statements that she intuitively found contradictory could be valid statements with the exception of one of them. And then still makes the point that this type of language probably still isn't productive overall for like trying to affect material change. And you can test me on a few of the things I said while recording that segment. So here we are. I'm basically thinking about how best to explain bi lesbianism, but it's like, it's not one thing because a lot of people use it in different ways because there's utility to it. It's not just about, I am both bisexual and lesbian. Mm -hmm. It's, there is potential utility for my gender is not static and I am attracted to women and that needs to be acknowledged. Like mm -hmm. somebody said, a gender fluid person who is attracted to women, mm -hmm. potentially also non-binary people, but somebody use exclusive attraction as well. Mm -hmm. And they do want to acknowledge that sometimes they are straight and sometimes they are lesbian and that's valid. They need to be able to do that to not feel dysphoric. Um, that person just be bisexual overall then? Or if they're in a period of their life in which they feel a more heterosexual attraction, they could specify that, hey, I'm like currently heterosexual, whatever. But there have been like, there, there are periods in my life where like a shift between being like heterosexual and being like bisexual or whatever and stuff like that. It's could, up could... to that person though. Um, and I don't think we should police that person's life. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it for that one. It's, it's a label that fits them because they're not attracted to men and their gender does not fit a quote normal lesbian archetype so they feel the need to add a little prefix to it to get the umbrella over all of themselves and not not ignore a part of them okay so i think there's there's multiple parts of this i want to do one thing first so D describe this 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 person once again that we're talking about that that you would label as a bisexual lesbian uh, this hypothetical person mm -hmm. is gender fluid and okay. dating a woman and okay. sometimes they are a woman sometimes they are non-binary mm -hmm. and sometimes they are a man so hold on so but but they're are they okay they're dating a woman what's their general like like attraction towards people what, what does that look like they are not attracted to men just Period. They are attracted to women, and they are possibly attracted to non-binary people. Okay. Um, so let's say not attracted to men, and then we'll say also attracted to non-binary people. Okay. There is words specifically, and I think these words were super useful, for people who like have uh, like attraction towards specific um like like genders without necessarily like incurring like a, a carried with it like definition or identification of like their own gender so for instance when you talk about like heterosexual or homosexual sure that specifies like what gender you're attracted to but it also carries with it or in order for you to be able to understand that there also needs to be like a like a stapling of like what gender you are in that situation right which mm -hmm. is is like kind of where these terms fall short a little bit and i recognize that so for this individual who is like non-binary and like attracted to women and there's there's a word for um for the non-binary version of what i'm about to say as well but i don't have it on hand right now but i could find it like are you looking for trixic and toric uh no that's not what i'm looking for what i'm looking for is that okay. i think that this person could be like like best or most like like, like linguistically described as being like a gender fluid person who is gynosexual so gynosexual there's being... a lot of discourse around that too Okay, what, what does that discourse sound like? Because this, so for those um, who don't know, gynosexual uh, means individuals who experience sexual attraction towards women, females, and or femininity, regardless mm -hmm. of whether they were assigned female at birth. So this doesn't carry with it the connotation of your own gender that homo or heterosexual does. It's just that's like a not specified word. That word is really butch-phobic among the legend, sorry, the legendary community. Amazing. The legendary we are legendary <laughs> lesbians, though. Uh, the lesbian community. I'm a butch lesbian, and I'm not comfortable being referred to under the uh, term gynosexual um so if somebody said they were that i would immediately not want to date them what's the background to that i'm curious 
I mean, I'm non-binary, so mm -hmm. as much as I, I am not feminine. Mm -hmm. And as much as I'm not necessarily masculine, butchness is more assigned to masculinity than it is ever, and it's not assigned to feminine. So assigning it to gynosexuality, which already has discourse surrounding it, I'll get into that in a second, has kind of disrespectful ties to invalidating somebody's non-femininity that they have deliberately disconnected themselves from. And gynosexuality has some weird connotations because some people use it to say that they're only attracted to people with vaginas, and some people use it to say they're attracted to femme people, and it just gets messy, and the same goes with uh, androsexuality. And some people call it gynophilia and androphilia, which is really messy. Yeah, and that, um, but that's, that has specific connotations to, like, yeah. bad, like, yeah, to when, when it comes to discussing of, uh, like, trans individuals and the trans experience, 100%. I've, I've heard of yes. that association. So maybe my original question wasn't clear. So, like, what, what specific, like, like individual um, is hurt by the, by the use of the term gynosexual? Like, what type of individual, I guess I should ask? Somebody like me. Okay, and the reason why you're hurt by the term is because maybe I didn't catch it the first time. Because uh, I'm not a feminine lesbian. I would not be caught under that label. Okay, but wait, why well, would you be caught under uh, that table? Because this, this label here doesn't denotate like the, the femininity or masculinity or presentation of the individual who holds the attraction. It just demarcates the, like, what you're attracted towards, which is the feminine, the woman, like female, depending on what definition you want to use here. So it, it doesn't, like, but, at least from the definition that I've seen of it, it, it doesn't seem to, like, incur any... It's used to exclude butchers. Okay, so I... people, okay, so I understand. So, so it's been historically used against butch lesbians to be like, oh, you're not really a lesbian, you're a gynosexual. Because in, in their minds, like, specific, like, a lesbian has to be two feminine people. Is that kind of how that goes? Yeah, and that's okay. a lot of terms that people have used, like femme for femme lesbians, and uh, there's, <laughs> uh, I think Vixen Amoric was, um, I don't think that was femme for femme, but that was like AFAB for AFAB lesbians, which completely, no, that was woman identifying with woman identifying, which is new turf rhetoric, which included trans women, but only binary trans women, mm -hmm. and they invented this term as like a new lesbian sexuality so wouldn't like i guess what would at least like what would maybe um make sense and this is something that's been historically done with like specific like labels that have been applied to lgbt people is if number one people who specifically like exclude like women people who identify and express as women but that are like you know like masculine as well so like a, a butch lesbian or whatever um, that we like generally fight against people that don't want to label them lesbian, despite the fact that it is a like a woman, you know, being attracted to a woman, uh, and and try to like like fight that and get rid of that. What would that be? Um, butch phobia, um, and at the same time try to like you know like keep or like reclaim the validity or the the utility in the word like gynosexual, so that it could be used. Because it does have good descriptive validity and it does do something very specific that the terms heterosexual and homosexual cannot do. Um, and then try to like, you know, try to as much as possible to get rid of that, I guess, historical context in which that word has been used in order to exclude butch lesbians from like the, the identity of being like lesbian, so to say. Um, because if we kind of throw out the word gynosexual as a whole, then unless we make a new word, which... Maybe, but I don't know how like how that process would look like. Then, then we lose the ability to um, to have like a specific like label that demarcates like where your attraction is towards anyone without necessarily having any connotation to what your own gender is. Which I do feel is like a, a fairly like there is definitely a utility in that um, because it doesn't necessarily like demarcate your own gender, so to say. If we're going to keep going into gynosexual, then I have to include that that includes oftentimes people will use gynosexual to include trans men and exclude trans women, which gets really, really complicated and really, really offensive. But it, so it's definitely clear, not a good word to use. It's not the word like there, there's nothing like 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 wrong with the definition of the word in itself. It's just the fact that it's been. It, oh, no, like, it's, it's been, like I've seen people who use gynosexual as their word, but it's not a lesbian term. Okay, do do you think there's anything inherently harmful with let, let's let's forget about gynosexual as a term for the moment. 
Do you think there's anything inherently harmful in having a word uh, that describes individuals who experience sexual attraction towards women, females, and or femininity, regardless of whether they were assigned female at birth? Do you believe there is that there there is there's something wrong in having a word that means that? No. So it it it's, it it very much stems from the fact that like historically, specifically the iteration of that definition being the term gynosexual has been used in exclusionary and in harmful contexts in the past. Exclusionary and incorrectly inclusion. And incorrectly inclusionary. Okay. So where, where, where I'm coming from here is wouldn't the like solution to that like be to either we try to like reclaim this, this word as has been done with a lot of other like sort of um, LGBT terminology and words and labels in the past, or maybe if, if the, the, the weight and the negative connotation to this is too strong, get rid of that word and have a new word that means the same thing. Like, shouldn't that be sort of like the, the, the course of action here in this instance? This is my personal opinion. I am not every queer person. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Okay. I think gynosexual and androsexual have very specific definitions uh -huh. that the people who use them use very deliberate. The reason that people have made defin or have made words like by lesbian and by gay which has been used is to explicitly define that they are attract they are women or non-men attracted to non-men and non-women attracted to non-women but they are also attracted you know i can't even say that because there are some by lesbians and gays who are attracted to the opposite gender, but that is so, so rare that I've never, ever seen it. The term is just used to expand upon their own gender identity and their own sexuality. But like, bi lesbians have existed and been a part of lesbian activism since, like, the 50s and 60s mm -hmm. and have been on the, I can't say that word, but it's the lesbian march, it's a slur. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> lesbians have been on that flag or the banner for ages and people just don't want to look at it and i can explain why we have existed and how we have existed but i guess i can't explain why we're real and valid and we don't have to use the word bisexual because we're just not bisexual a lot okay. of us have tried to use the word bisexual and it just didn't work okay because it sounded like like when you did your explanation it sounded less like um your problem necessarily was with the the usage of the term and your problem was that you believe that no matter what the actual word is to describe what we're talking about so individuals who experience a sexual attraction towards like femininity like regardless of what that word actually is it will still be used in like 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 hostile ways is that, Anything is that can of, be used in a hostile sure, but, way. But, it's that everybody can identify with what word they want, and a lot of words have been. But the 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 thing I'm I'm trying to get at here is that like because it sounded like before we agreed that there is there's nothing inherently wrong with like a word that means this, but then in your like argument for why you believe that term isn't bad, it sort of sounds like you believe that you know like no matter what that word actually is, it will be used in ways that will be exclusionary and that therefore you will have people that don't feel like they, they adequately identify with the word. And in that situation, I suppose, and I'm, I'm going to get to the second part of this later, which sort of like motivates my, my entire reasoning on this. But in that case, it seems like the, the better course of action here is to like, like heavily like fight against bigoted usage of the word and incorrect usage of the word and ensure that, you know, like, the words are used in the, the proper context, at least in, like, a mainstream uh, environment, so that, you know, general, anyone can use any word to mean anything if they really want on an individual level, but that generally we agree that this word means, like, this or whatever. And, like, we've done this previously, so, like, the word, you know, like, like, gay historically, the word, and this, there's discourse around this as well, but the word queer as well is one of them that it depends on the community you're in specifically, that has been, like, like, some of them have been completely reclaimed, some of them are still on the fence, some of them just, like, beyond saving, but that, that you, you kind of run that process as well with, with these words because, and here, here's where like kind of my main argument comes into like position, right? Is that I think it is valuable to have some forms of like, like commonly 
agreed upon words that help us like understand one another and that can like to the best of our abilities have like like general like rules so to say as to like hey like what 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 can i how can i get to know this person from these terms i give you and it sounded like at the 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 end of your last statement that your argument kind of boiled down to that oh nobody will ever feel like they 100% identify with like any label or whatever or that like it doesn't really matter how like descriptively accurate a label is sometimes just people just don't jive with it um you cut out for a second can you repeat that yeah and you kind of said that like it, sometimes it doesn't really matter what the definition of an actual word is like sometimes people like even if it's super accurate people just kind of like don't jive with it for whatever reason but I feel like that there is still definitely some value in having words that help us understand one another and that can help people learn about the LGBT movements and LGBT people in a way that has like a sort of like lexicon. The lexicon can be big because there's a lot of fucking experiences that are very different, but at least one exists so that people can be like, oh, you are, you know, like whatever. You are like a like bisexual, you might be gynosexual, you might be gender fluid, you might be like bisexual, you know, like heteroromantic, heterosexual or whatever. And then they can be like, oh, I don't know what that word means, but what I can do is I can I can look it up and I I know what it means kind of here. But when there's sort of like everybody has like their own definition for all of these words, what ends up happening is that like as somebody trying to learn or understand you. Um, I'm not saying like you specifically, like trying not single, but like generally like, trying to understand a person, it becomes like infinitely more difficult for them to do that. And I think that having understanding is super duper duper important to ensure that we can uh, ascertain like material and just like general societal liberation for like marginalized LGBT groups as a whole. And that's sort of where my argument stems in fundamentally. If I'm understanding you correctly, I do agree. We need the base terms. and. I always introduce myself to people as a lesbian because fundamentally that's what I am. Mm -hmm. But I, I guess, pardon me if this is a, a bit too personal or forward, but I, I guess I'm, my consistent concern is that you and other people are just constantly going to dismiss mm -hmm. that people have their own personal sexuality definitions and that they're just as useful and valid. And once they're explained that you're just going to say, oh, so you're this, when we've clearly explained to you what we, what we are. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yes, we have the base definition that we can absolutely use to advocate for all social rights. That's, that makes perfect sense. That's mm -hmm. what we should do. But the, I guess we can call it trickle down. The trickle down niche identities still exist and they always have. Mm -hmm. So why should we get rid of them just to make people call themselves larger umbrella terms? Um I guess when it comes to this, if you're like in in your like your own like like LGBT space with like people in your local community or whatever and you guys all have like specific, you know, like terms which are excellently valid and that you use there for each other and they're 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 apropos they give utility to the conversation that they they make you know all the members of that group feel valid 100 percent fucking go for it okay base as fuck but i do feel that we also need a more generalized sort of like public lexicon and like agreeable set of definitions that we can use in order to get an average person or an uninitiated person educated and on board with what you're talking about um and what i feel may be going on right now is that um there may be like a lot of people who are using that that um that sort of like like in group definitions and identities that they have which are like perfectly valid to have and are sort of trying to um or or, or sort of like projecting that i suppose onto a like a like a stage or like a, a situation in which it may conflict or be intuitively contradictory with that common set of like lexicon or definitions that have a lot of utility when it comes to being able to understand and liberate like LGBT people uh, from bigotry and, you know, institutional and systemic discrimination and the rest of it. And that's sort of like where my issue comes from. You can, it's 100% perfect. If you have your, your um, if you have communities in which uh, you or like any other people like have um specific gender words which are you know excellent for you and make you feel perfectly valid and everything and you are valid with those terms 
excellent, beautiful, love it. But I think there's some value to sort of like trying to preserve this this general or like public um, definition or like lexicons that we can use to build popular support for LGBT movements with. I think there's some miscommunication between the the MSpec queer community and the baseline queer community, I guess. Um, I don't know what MSpec about is. This. I think you could tell me what that means. Multispec. Okay. Um, then, because nobody's arguing to get rid of the base labels, uh, we're just trying to get people to stop memeing on us about us just being bisexual or trying to tell us that we're not really who we are or that we don't exist and that our labels are contradictory when we can explain what they are. And there's not even like an agreed upon definition for lesbian and gay. People just want to say it's binary gendered people or feminine and masculine gendered people attracted to each other. Mm -hmm. When like that just excludes butch and femme, lesbians and gays respectively. So we can't, even agree on the baseline terms. So I kind of get frustrated when people like think that we have agreed upon even what lesbian and gay and are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I it's why this whole thing is really hard to discuss. It's not just one issue. So when it comes to this, I, I agree that you we don't have like generally like a, okay hold on actually i should start at the beginning of your statement when you said that you don't necessarily agree that there is like that sort of like utilization of like in-group specific terms and definitions into like a, a public space i don't necessarily think that's true and like one one of the, the key situations on this is the very like reason why we're here discussing which is the, the counterpoints thing as a whole like all the people that came on on the public platform to talk about and say that like you know counterpoints use of these terms were like like bigoted you know oh i'm talking um, about public space like touching grass public space i'm not on twitter Okay. Um, I would say that like it's it's a public platform, so like it can be used by anybody, and it's like used by millions and millions of users. When it comes to like like you know IRL stuff like that, um, I have personally not encountered this as being the case, and that's why I don't I I don't make any statements in regards to the fact that um, there are like like this you know like a bunch of um, like people like in real life that like try to use these terms and um yeah and try to like put them into like you know like public situations where we can have this public lexicon that we sort of like appeal to mostly but i'm probably sure that they um exist to some extent then yeah. we have the the second point i just want to get to the, the three things um you said which is that we don't have agreed upon definitions and like there's already people that like like there, there are plenty of people most people probably um thinking like this sort of like binary thing so like no difference between sex and gender in the first place like you're a man or a woman masculine feminine yada 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 that's like it that's the end of the discussion and i agree with you 100 percent that that's that those portions of people exist which is once again why i would believe that it's super important that we try our very best to keep like some form of like concise i suppose like common definition things that we can use to educate these people and like tell them about this because if they hear like a set of definitions for these terms for like one person or like from one space and then like a week or two later they hear a completely different and like assuming that you're using both of these at the same time like contradictory um like words then it becomes confusing as fuck and it can harm like general acceptance because not understanding something feeling like alienated from something is not a productive strategy towards getting people to like understand your perspective and where you're coming from. However, I think that there is another part that could be used just generally to that sort of like common core, I suppose, understanding of LGBT issues, which is that there should be an emphasis on, like you mentioned, understanding that, hey, these are sort of like, like, like broader, um, like overall definitions for these words. However, in specific spaces and in specific communities, these words have varying definitions like with all words and therefore you should never assume that all people will always use these words here uh, and to like describe themselves in specific like individual cases or in like individual communities um, but these words uh, serve as like a good starting ground towards understanding uh, these forms of issues and like a disclaimer of something like that at the beginning could go a long way and um, yeah and in and, and, and preventing I suppose this the the which is a rational fear that you have of like oh yeah let's say we establish a good common core for this uh but then people that have like their own terms or whatever get discriminated against like so fucking heavily uh because yes. of this 
Um, so you could kind of get the, the best of both worlds here, I guess. I don't think we disagree. Um, again, I do think my worries are and were valid. And <laughs> it's thank you for being patient with me, I guess. Um, when you say more valid, do you mean like more valid? No, than... they are they are valid, okay, not okay, more okay. valid. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah, I, I understand. I, I I definitely like understand. Like, hey, that's if, all I have. That's, yeah, um, that's fine. If if you have the the like you know like personal definition for this term or definitions that you share oh, with like people in local communities, my definitions mm -hmm. that I consistently use are lesbians are non men attracted to non men. Not non-masculine people, because there are masculine lesbian mm -hmm. men. And gay people are non-women attracted to non-women. Mm -hmm. Not feminine people, because again, there are feminine gay men. Mm -hmm. Or gay people. Like, I, I don't think that's really hard to understand. Sure, but do, do you have a word under your system that would describe like a, 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 like a woman attracted to another woman? Would that just a be lesbian. A Women loving women. Wait, maybe maybe I, I misheard, but didn't you just say that your definition for a lesbian is a a non man um like being attracted to a non man? And I understand that a woman being attracted to a woman is like a subset of that. Um you but you just say no, I'm not into you and you move on. Okay. So like you, your set of definitions don't have like a, a specific word to specify that variation of like lesbian then by your definition so to say no and honestly i don't think it needs to necessarily mm -hmm. because it hasn't been woman attracted to woman beforehand before <laughs> uh, i mean i'm gonna bring up history before the aids crisis when a bunch of our queer elders died and didn't get a chance to teach us what these terms actually I mean, there were a bunch of non-binary and non-binary lesbians. My favorite is Leslie Feinberg. And Z died of Lyme's disease in, I think, 2014. And like, I don't know, like the terms have never meant what people want to define them as nowadays. Mm -hmm. And it's just really frustrating. I, I understand where that's coming from, but like at the end of the day, right? I, I think may, maybe not, but we both believe in the the subjectivity of like of language in some regard, right? Even though yes. like we may have a subject, like th there's no definition that's like inherently more correct or more like incorrect than another. And the reason, and I, I'm not going to say that like oh, like my or like whatever definition of like lesbian is is a better definition than what yours or like some other person's definition would because that that's that's an impossible statement to um to substantiate because words are fucking like subjective right um but that, Actually, the, this the, is a good the, this is a good point yeah um, but, but, yeah I, I just need like a good things. reason why people would use bi lesbian uh -huh. because if you want to define a lesbian as a woman who loves only women why wouldn't people use bi lesbian to denote that they are not attracted to men but are attracted to other genders um, because that's where, at least, like, from my understanding with these terms, you would bring in the more, like, specialized definition, like, I am a, 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 I'm a, okay, hold on, yeah, so in, th in this situation, we have a, a, a woman who is bisexual, but is not attracted to men. So, right? a bi-lesbian. Or, alternatively, a, a, a bisexual, um, a bisexual woman who is, then you could, like, have gynosexual and then uh, like a similar word for like like non that would include trans women. men that would include trans men why would gynosexual include trans men gynosexual often includes trans men the definition i'm reading out here is individuals who experience sexual attraction towards women females and or femininity regardless of what they were assigned trans to men are afab Sure, but then we can bring into like in, into this as well the fact that hey, like when when it comes to like our usage of these words, we have now kind of like detached them more and specifically like also change the definition of like the sexual terms you, that you could have. You that... want to change the definition, but that's not what it is now. Which, that's hold not on, the hold argument. But when it comes to gynosexual, like a, a person who is a, a trans man, um, that sure they may have been assigned female at birth, but 
at the moment they're presenting as a man, as a male, right? That and they identify as such, correct? They, uh, the the people I have seen identify with gynosexual are attracted to AFAB people, which includes trans men. Okay. Like they explicitly say it includes trans men. It's not good. Um, I'm not familiar of the like use of that word in that situation. Like, like I think that like what somebody was assigned at birth shouldn't be like it, 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 th there's no like meaningful utility to your, including that and this is your opinion though yeah but I, i'm explaining that i don't think there's like a meaning with with any word when it comes to like attraction of an individual there's any meaningful words uh, meaningful utility in including the like the sex or gender somebody was assigned to at birth when you're talking about your current attraction towards that person i'll and be in chats got it Maybe, like okay i mean I'm going like it's not a word. Like that's the like, online definition is not necessarily how it's used in the community. That's just how it works. Um, sure. And I guess my argument would be that we should we should move towards definitions that are more like like the definitions that we're looking at here because it has more like utility. You can I argue guess. that, but that's not the way it is now, and I I don't think it's going to change. It's not been used that way for ages. And it doesn't appear like it's going to. Gynosexual and androsexual are very explicitly used to mean I am attracted to vaginas or I am attracted to penises. I, I can't comment on that because I don't have like much experience with people like specifically using those words. But um, I'm curious then. So in, in your like ideal society where you got to like set all the definitions and like you had like a really good ability to get people to like buy into your definitions. Um, how would you like make your definitions like work or like function in that regard do you believe that that your set of these like definitions are maybe I, they it's entirely possible what they are that your definitions of like these words are like your specific definitions are non-contradictory like you're I'm asking which definitions because you didn't specify them exclusively like specify. your definitions your definitions for these words of lesbian and gay and yeah lgbt like vocabulary and stuff like that I can't see them as being non-contradictory because as soon as you introduced non-binary people into the equation, uh -huh. lesbian and gay became a lot more fucking complicated. Mm -hmm. So th that's part of the reason because like, if I, I can send you what, what I'm looking at at the moment. Da -da -da -da. Here you go. Because like, while, while I understand that, hey, there may be like discrepancies in how people use these terms, at least like these sets of definitions, which come from like Stonewall. These oh, you're words... looking at Stonewall. Yeah, th these words like taken, like on their face, w w like operating within themselves, are not contradictory to each other, and that's why I feel like we should move towards like the definition I mentioned previously, which is the one I read out. Because your response that was people don't use them that way. Um, sure, I can recognize it, but I believe we should move towards definitions of words that provide us with the most amount of utility. And I believe one pretty important part in determining the utility of words is the fact that they aren't contradictory because the point of words is that we can understand them and that they make sense like conceptually These but if we have the definitions i've seen used okay but regardless of whether or not we, we we see them used at least from 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 things i've been able to point out these words don't appear to be contradictory on their face so that's why i think we should move towards a set of like common definitions for these terms that aren't like contradictory in nature um, so that we can get as much utility from these words as possible, so that they're as easy to understand as possible, so that as like, and a part of that is that they aren't contradictory, so that we can get more people to understand the, like, like an LGBT, not necessarily experience, but at least like, understand them as like fucking human beings, right? Which is a pretty important step um, in, uh, in, you know, like LGBT liberation and ensuring that they, their material interests are met and that they aren't subject to like bigotry or systemic disenfranchisement or discrimination i can agree with that i i'm just gonna say i think this this paper has a lot of definitions mm -hmm. that the community just doesn't use this way so we might be communicating on a on a playing field that isn't isn't even remotely the same yeah, but the the argument I'm making doesn't in any way like hinge on a premise that these are the way that the words are used at the moment. The 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 the, the thing I'm laying on is that I, this is probably the way that it. we should use these words. Yeah, I would love it if 
gynosexual and androsexual meant this, and I think it should. Uh -huh. And that, that that that's the that's the that's the totality of the argument I'm making here. How like if we try our best towards sticking to you know this is like the the allyship term handout. So this is the handout sheet for like people. That, this is exactly what I described, right? For people who like want to be allies and want to learn more. Here it's a list of terms. Bang! You can look up like pretty much like any term that you will encounter, and you will be able to understand exactly what they mean. And that we we collectively try to move towards these words. And we try to, at least in the, in the public situation, public spaces, move away from words that are contradictory to this. Because if we try to establish a more commonly agreed upon set of definitions for these terms, which is a hell of a fucking task to do, and I recognize that, at least that way we have a more common ground by which to be able to help people understand LGBT, LGBT issues and identities and sexualities and the rest of it, so that we can use that to build popular support towards liberation of these groups. Yes. In reading this, I'm still very confused. This is confused. I'm confused as fuck as well, but like, you know... <sighs> the it, whole it, point of these labels is to expand people's ability to communicate their sexuality and often to include non-binary people so we can explain our sexuality in a way that makes sense to us and communicates to other people in a way that doesn't invalidate the genders that we might feel. Like, and, and, oh. and, and that's why I said that they're like, specifically like- this, And it's this, not even, gynosexual and androsexual don't make that useful. Or aren't useful for making anybody feel more valid. Cause people aren't necessarily masculine or feminine. I'm unsure what you mean by that. And in those situations, my brain is frying. If they're endogenous, point. no, it's a fucking confusing conversation. <laughs> Trust it me. is. Um, like in those situations, then, um, then you wouldn't use that type of word, then, right? Because yeah, it, like if it just simply wouldn't apply to the labeling of sexuality is so complicated and stuff. Like it is. we can, I think we agree that like we can use the base terms of LGBTQ to fight for base rights and everything. Mm -hmm. But the labeling of everybody's sexuality and gender needs to be left up to the individual person and the community they live in. Sure. Um, and I and I finding I mean. new terms mm -hmm. for external sexuality. It, like for public stuff is going to be a lot more messy than anybody wants it to be um and i don't think this is not shade on you i don't think us talking anymore is going to solve it or get any further um so just because debating the semantics of words or talking about the semantics of words is like but we're just talking in circles um, I think we've we've gotten somewhere with this, right? And, and yeah, that's we've why gotten somewhere. Yeah. There's just we're talking in circles now. But I think um, we've gone in a more productive direction, and that's why if we yeah. take it back to the the very start of this conversation, right, which is the counterpoints thing, and that's why I believe that the, the, the point that is being made here is how often like these identities are employed by some people to be sort of like deliberately like confusing or contradictory with what most people may find these words to mean. Um, and that type of like behavior and that type of usage of words in like in, in public settings um, that, that harms our ability to make that base set of public definitions that both you and I agree are really, really useful yes. towards fighting for political power. And that's the point that ContraPoints was making. And that's the point that I've been, been, been making here. Yeah. In the end, we agree. All right. I misinterpreted. No worries. You know, like... Yeah, we have a discussion, um, like, having, like, words that have to do with, like, concession or doing anything wrong. It's, it's not, it's absolutely not necessary. You and I work together towards finding, a, a, like, a, a good, like, common conclusion uh, on the topic here. And that's, it's not somebody misinterpreted, somebody conceded or whatever. It's both of us got to a, a, a productive ending point when it comes to stuff like this. So, um, hmm. thank, thank you, you for being patient much. with me. Yeah, and, and thank you for, for explaining this with me. You went a lot farther and, in having this discussion um, than a lot of other people would have. And I really, really, really do appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Thank you much. You have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.